Hello everybody, Diff the Ender here again, and today I'm going to be giving you a video and presentation on breaking the meta. Often I get a lot of emails on a regular basis, you know, some of them are saying thank you for your great post, some of them, you know, point out mistakes in some of them, and some of them are suggestions for future, future articles. I get a few of these emails every day, and one of the most common emails I get is Diff, here's a build, can you math it out? Is it viable in the meta? Or Diff, how do I break the meta? I get that kind of email very, very often. I don't pretend to be a pro player. I try not to fool you guys. I'm not a great player. I'm an average player just like you. I don't have the power to single-handedly bring about a shift in the meta. However, what I can do for you and what I can do well is explain what limits meta shifts and how you can help change the meta, how you as a person can help move it along. I'll be trying to explain this to you using a couple of concepts that I know about and that'll help you ex uh, explain the reason behind the stagnant meta and why we must be the change we want to see in this game. Now, uh, firstly, I want to say um, our YouTube channel is going to hit a thousand subs. So I'm very happy about that. I did say I'm going to go out a giveaway at a thousand subscribers. So Today's giveaway is a $25 RP card. How are you going to win this? Um, just comment on the video below with a unique build that you may have seen and be a subscriber and I'll put out a video within the next week announcing the winner. Now, back to the article at hand here. So, what is the meta? Why is it like that and how can we change the meta? These are the most common questions I get. You know, what is the meta? The meta is AP mid, AD bot, support bot. Bruise the top jungler. Why is it like that and how can we change it? Now, there's a book called Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And he has a concept in there and he calls it the golden circle. So, here's the golden circle. What is the golden circle? It basically states that instead of starting with what. So, what? Start with why and then work your way out. So, ask why do we have a meta? How is it formed? And what is the meta? So don't go from what. The meta is the what. What is the meta? What The meta is that there's an AP mid, AD bot, bruise top, etc. But why do we have a meta? So if you want, you can answer this question using this model. So why is the meta, uh, so in relation to why the meta is the way it is currently right now. So why? We want to make a great team composition. That's the why. I, why do I want to make a great team composition? Because I want the best chance of winning. That's why I want to have a good team setup. How am I going to do this? I'm going to do this by giving my team carries, so my AP and AD carry, the safest possible way for them to make most the greatest impact in the game. So I'm going to give my AD carry a supported bot lane and help them farm up and become the beast they are late game. I'm going to give my AP carry the ability to level up quickly, but also give them the shortest lane so they have the ability to make the greatest impact in the game. Reasons like that, that's how I'm going to do it. So as a result, what what is the meta? As a result, my meta is that I have an AD bot, AP mid, etc. So that's the golden circle. Now, keep going on. So, what the effectiveness of the current meta and Riot's part in it. So, most players would agree to the fact that the current meta is the best way to play the game. So currently AD bot APM is the best because AD bot, they need to farm late game and having support with them gives them the safest way to farm. AP mid needs levels and putting them in a solo lane gives them that and putting them in the middle gives them the shortest lane, paths to gank both side lanes as well as access to blue buff. So many, many reasons. It's currently the best way to play the game. Most people agree with that. I agree with that. However, and there's some slight variations that like you have double AP top instead of a bruiser top. This meta is effective. It's been proven using time, you know, all throughout the past year and a bit. This meta has been the one prevalent in tournaments ever since DreamHack from last year. This has been the meta that's stuck with us. It's been proven, tried and tested. It is the most effective way to play the game at the moment. So why are we as a community unhappy with this? Look, everyone wants to change the meta. It's like, oh, this they we're going to break the meta, etc, etc. I mean, why are we unhappy about this? Well, the key to understand it is we're not ha unhappy about the current meta. The current meta is fine with me. Makes it maybe for supports with zero CS, but 
everyone is happy for the most part. It's not that the meta itself is boring, it's the fact that there's no variation. People like change. Familiarity breeds contempt and familiarity also leads to boredom. Some players like to have variety that gives them a thrill every time they get into a game. That's that's one of the biggest differences between Dota and LoL. Dota, every game you go in is much more different than LoL. Every game in LoL, you get the same thing, AP mid, AD bot, etc. People like to see variation and that's why we get all this post article you know threads asking about how to change the meta so why haven't we able to change it yet well the majority of the community contradicts themselves we scream for a change in the meta we say you know i want the meta to change i don't like zero cs support but i don't i want to run ad mid again you get all these complaints people want change we crave that change however when it's time for a patch cycle, we get patch previews, patch notes, people start contradicting themselves. They'll be saying, you know, this champion is way too strong in the current meta, better nerf, way too weak in the current meta, please buff. You know, you get people trying to balance around the meta and riot plays to these people. You will see proof of this, in, especially in support changes. You'll see people saying, oh, no, sorry, Morel is saying, supports are healing too much in the current meta. We want to promote aggression. So we're going to nerf down that heal to make it so supports aren't the biggest part of bot lane. We're going to be increasing the aggressive supports of bot lane, etc, etc. Those are small changes. However, people do complain. They're saying, you know, we already had a heal nerf. We don't need another healing nerf. This is ruining the meta some more. And they're contradicting themselves. They want a meta change, but they won't let Riot change it. So every time Riot does a significant change, let's say... Let's take, for example, the jungle change from about half a year, one year ago now, where they reworked that whole jungle to be a lot faster. People complained so much. There's, it was polarizing. People were saying, you know, either take this side of the argument or that side of the argument. People hated the new jungle or loved the new jungle. Either way, Riot was taking a lot of slack. Uh, sorry, a lot of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Okay, she's taking a lot of complaints. You know, pe people saying, oh, this is ruining the game. Law isn't the same anymore, blah, blah, blah. And that jungle change wasn't even major. I mean, it was no it's by no means a small change, but it wasn't a monumental change. You still people still play relatively the same. So a couple of junglers have fallen out of favor. It's just a couple of new junglers that are now more viable. Effectively the gameplay style still remains the same. If we have so many complaints for change that wasn't that huge, imagine how big how much how many complaints we'd have to change was, let's say, rights nerfing all bruisers or rights buffing all mages. If Riot wants to shift the meta by doing a change like that, they're going to have to take a lot of complaints from the community and we're contradicting ourselves. You want to change, see a change in the meta? Tell Riot to balance based on the champions, champion itself and not based on the meta. So right now we've got... Um, sorry. We've got Riot balancing based on the meta instead of based on champions itself. So we're comparing Sona's sustained support compared to other supports in bot lanes in bot lane in that meta i mean there's no thoughts of you know them going other lane trying out different things they're based balancing based on the meta which isn't right now let me introduce to you the law of diffusion of innovations but before i do that sorry <laughs> how do we bring about a change in the meta there's three significant ways first one is Find a different setup that counters the current meta. So, you know, what counters AP meds, bruisers, etc. You know, just find the complete counter to the current meta. However, that's unlikely to happen. You don't just happen along a complete counter in one step. You don't just go, snap my finger, I have the idea, I'm going to counter the meta. That doesn't happen. Or you can sit back and hope Riot makes giant balancing changes. So, you know, they just decide one day we're going to introduce a new champion class or one day they decide they're going to nerf all AD champions. Short of that happening, there won't be a change. But the third way is allow small innovations to gain exposure through the commu community and become popular. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean crazy things like little things like running AD KL top, which I'll be talking about more in a couple of minutes. Firstly, let me introduce you to the law of diffusion of innovations. So here's a picture of the law of innovation diffusions. So what is this picture? It shows 
uh, it's a sociological concept that shows the rate at which a new idea or design is adopted. So let's say you have a new idea. Let's say emails. All right. So when was emails around, uh, first introduced? 1990s? I'm not sure. Okay. So initially, the invention and early adopters of email would have started using email around, let's say, early 90s. However, it didn't reach uh, mass popularity until a bit longer, until the early majority started to take interest. They see, oh, look, these people are using it. I better start using it. So, and then it expands through the community and a lot more people start using email. And then there's a late majority who say, you know, oh, we're a bit late to the party, but the majority is using it, so I'll start using it as well. So right by now, you've got around 80% of the population using it. And then you've got the people that lag behind. These are the people who, you know, who buy touchstone phones because they can't buy rotary phones anymore. These are the people who use the internet because they can't post standard mail anymore. These people hate change or they don't have the skill or resources or motivation to follow change. So this is basically how all ideas spread through the community. There's always a few people in the beginning who like, who innovate the changes and then there's a few people who adopt it early. And then it becomes popular and then a majority adopts and then there's people who are very, very last adopts. So there's still people who don't use email and they are the worst of the laggards at the moment. Now, the key to the law of diffusion of innovation is the chasm. So basically, this is the same graph as before, except it's got the chasm labeled. So what is the, uh, is, is it say chasm or chasm? I'll call it chasm. Okay. So there's a giant chasm here. Basically, every idea has people who get it. So let's say you're starting a business and you're saying, you know, I'm going to sell headsets that also give you soda. Now, there'll be around 10% of people who just get the idea. That's that's around these bunch of people. They'll be like, you know what, that's a cool idea. I'm buying it. They want to be the first. They buy it because they believe in the product. Every company, every idea will have people that believe in it. And those will be the innovators and early adopters. That'll be the around 10, 15%. However, then we hit the chasm. What is the chasm? Well, for an idea to be widespread, it has to take off the majority. Now, you can have all the early adopters and innovators using this, but until it gets to this zone, it's not going to spread throughout. Now, how do we cross the chasm? The chasm basically says that you'll have X amount of market exposure, 15, 12, 18 percent. But to get mass exposure, to be popular, to be a widespread success, they have to cross the chasm and appeal to the early majority. How do we do this? Now, firstly, give me, let me give you some examples of ideas within League of Legends that relates to this. Now, here's a successful idea that crossed the chasm. 80 Kale top lane, six months ago, would have been something you would have never seen. It was, it's something of a new phenomenon. There are innovators who perfected and worked out the build. So people like Rincent and Zekant, they were one of the first people. They were the innovators and they pretty much perfected that build. And then we had a couple of early adopters. You had people like Dyrus pick it up. Now here's where the idea became successful. Dyrus is an extremely popular figure in the community. He's got mass viewer numbers and he's got a big fan following. He helped move the idea from this stage and cross it over into this stage. So now people see, you see AD Kale increasing in popularity. The early majority is starting to pick it up and the late majority will follow quite soon, I imagine. That is a successful idea. It was innovated by Rincent and Zekin, for example, and they were the innovators and Dyers was the early adopter. And once that happened, the popularity of Dyrus helped carry it through the chasm into widespread success. Now, here's an example of a not-so-successful idea. 
Some of you may have heard of the player named Zingi. He is a high elo solo queue player who is popular for trying out unusual builds. He does things like fiddlesticks with double dorns and rileys. Now, he also plays that fiddlesticks in mid lane, and he also does AP and Mumu. Now, these builds are very unusual. Why are these builds not widespread? Well, firstly, Azingi is definitely an innovator. He belongs in this category. There will be maybe a couple of people who are early ad who adopt it in Hyelo. But why has it not crossed the chasm into widespread popularity? Firstly, the early majority want to see a bunch of early adopters using it. So unless a bunch of people start using it, it won't get into widespread majority. Why haven't people started using it? Because they haven't seen proof of success. When Dyrus played AD Kale, it took him a tournament for that build to become popular. When he be when he started when he started taking AD Kale to tournaments and winning with it, and when the early majority saw success, they decided, you know what, this is a viable world. I'm going to start building it, and then we crossed the chasm, and then we had widespread success. But that hasn't happened with the Zingi. He might be playing AP Amumu all he wants around this area with these people. But until it's proven or gets enough exposure, it won't cross the chasm. Here's another example. Genja's Urgot. As many of you know, before IEM Kiv, M5 were relatively unknown. Genja obviously still played back then, and he already had his Urgot build set. He already did the Double Dorns, Brutalizer, Frozen Heart build. However, it was not popular. He ha he was one of the innovators again. Him and probably a couple of other people in the high elo um, echelons of EU West and EU East even. They were probably using that Urgot build. Just They were the innovators and early adopters. However, to cross the chasm, M5 had to show up big at IEM Kid. They had to cross the chasm by making that build popular and showing it can rig other teams. And once the early majority saw that happen, they decided to use it, and then it became popular. It's almost a standard build now. I don't know how the Urgot remake will affect it, but before this patch, it was a standard build. That's another example of how the propagation of and diffusion of innovation works. So, if I go back to here, why have I done this article? Why have I wrote this article? Why have I spe spoken to you about it? Why am I talking to you about this right now? I'm not wasting my time just trying to tell you why the meta won't shift. I want you to learn why the meta won't shift, and I want you to put into action. I want to help be the change of the meta. So I want you guys to be an active part in helping shift the game. Help provide exposure to people like Izingi, to people who have unique ideas. If it seems viable, if it seems like something that could work, if it has some sense of logic behind it, Try it out. Provide exposure to it. See if you can narrow the chasm. So instead of having to jump a hole, you know, from 15 to 25 percent to get the get across the chasm, see if you can narrow that gap. See if you can provide enough exposure so that the early adopters even get enough exposure to jump this gap. They get over here, and you only need about five percent extra exposure for it to become widespread. Give them the exposure with this. With these extraordinary builds, these unusual builds, so that you and the rest of us can benefit from it. You know, the more change we see, the more variety we see, the higher the likeliness that we will happen across happen across a completely new meta or a completely new champion in a build. Every time we find something new, we should give it the exposure to try it out. Every idea deserves a try. I believe we can make this happen. I believe you guys can give it the exposure. The powers within the community. Be the change that you want to see. That's all I want to say. If you want to break the meta, be the change that you want to see. Help provide exposure to unusual ideas. Now, um, once again, I do want to remind you, I'm just about to hit 1,000 subscribers, so I'd like to thank you guys for subscribing and supporting me all this time. That's really helping me out. I really, really appreciate it. I love you guys. So um, I've got to give away $25 RP. All I have to do is be a subscriber on my channel, which you most likely already are. And if you're not, you can still subscribe and enter. And leave a comment on the video. 
with a unique build that you have seen or have tried out and see if we can give, out, give it some exposure and see if we can try and shift the meta one bit at a time. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. Thank you for taking the time to read the article, which you most likely have. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the concept behind it. Um, thank you for watching. This is Diff the Ender, signing out. Cheers.